even the most mentally fit person, when they're faced with death, they'll break down. And I, I certainly had my days. I, I, I cried multiple days. I first get very angry, and that anger turns to motivation. So I'm going to get over this, and I'm going to prove to the world that I can rebuild stronger than I was before. And so I think that was one of the big lessons I learned. There's a big difference between what the world perceives and what you're actually doing. They told me because they thought chemo was not going to be very effective. Why don't we just do surgery and get it out? Giving you two completely different treatment options. So which do you choose? Hi, and welcome to Indian Explorers. In this podcast, we talk about Indian success stories. I am Sabrina, and together with my co-host Amit, we will get to understand the journey of our guests and what drives them. Their optimism, patience, idealism, and courage. These are their attributes which we hope to bring to life in these conversations with them. So if you enjoy the show, please hit the subscribe button and share it with others. Today we have a very special guest. Romaine is a lifelong entrepreneur and investor. He's currently a managing partner at S Group Capital, and is also an active owner operator at a leading Texas-based event services and venue management business. More so, he is a fighter who has the biggest joie de vivre, which is exuberant joy to live. An avid marathon runner, he was diagnosed with cancer in 2023 after three years of being misdiagnosed. He chronicles his comeback story on social media, and we are here to hear all about it. So welcome, Romain. Thank you for being with us today. I know you had a procedure recently. How are you, how are you feeling? Uh, honestly, I feel great. I, I'm surprised that I'm, I'm, uh, I've recovered this, this quickly, but I'm you know, really, really happy to have, the, have had this progress and happy to be on here. So thank you, guys. Thank you for being with us. You look great. So thank you. Hi, Romain. Thank you. Yeah. Romain, I, I believe we met 20 years ago in Bombay at some nightclub. I think we were both drunk. Uh, yes. But I remember you were extremely charming. You were great with the ladies. You had that American wit and charm. Um, and, uh, and then we haven't been in touch. And then I saw your story, uh, your fight back on cancer. And I wanted to start over there. Uh, three years misdiagnosed. I mean, WTF, what the hell happened? Yeah, no, it's, it's um, unfortunately, I think it's something that happens way too often. Um, for me, uh, as Sabrina mentioned, I'm, I've been a marathon runner for, for 13 years. I, I really do it just because it's allowed me to sort of travel around the world. And, and I'm a very goal-oriented person as well. So it's, it's you know, those, those benefits it's brought to me over the last decade or so. But being a runner, um, right around the beginning of COVID, I was starting to notice a, a pain in my lower abdomen, which I figured was uh, running related. Um, in fact, I was supposed to run a marathon uh, a month into COVID, which then ultimately got canceled. But being that I had already run, I was already training up to you know twenty miles a week or twenty miles a day. Uh, I figured I would just continue with the extreme runs, and so I was running, you know. 13 or 15 miles, at least once a week, if not twice a week. And so I was doing a lot of running and I figured maybe I've just overdone it. So I, I, I went to the doctors with the preconceived notion that that's what's causing it. And I think that was potentially my mistake is kind of leading the doctors into the thinking that this is running related. And so I went first to an internal medicine doctor who uh, did some MRIs, um, didn't find anything. I eventually wasn't happy with the fact that nothing was getting resolved. So I eventually went to go see a sports medicine doctor who just dug in deeper regarding the, the running. I actually did a year, year and a half of PT and my pain would sort of fluctuate. Um, but one thing I did notice, which was strange at some point, was the pain started radiating from my right side over to my left side. Um, and again, I have no idea what's going on. It's still running related. I'm still running, I'm still very active. Um, so about you know three years later, after seeing three or four doctors, um, the, the sports medicine doctor that I was seeing recommended that I do uh, another MRI to to see if there's potentially surgery that could fix the problem. And so when the results came back in, I went to go meet with him and his face was just white. I mean, he was shocked and he was like, have you read the report? I said, no, what's going on? And he said, well, they, they found a, a 13 centimeter malignancy uh, in, your, in your abdomen. And I was like, well, what does that mean? And he said, it's probably cancerous. We have to retest it. So 
Uh, of course, so, uh, you know, I, I was rescheduled for the following week. They retested. They confirmed everything. And, How long ago uh, was this, Romain? That was, uh, I was, I had these scans in May of 2023. Last year. And then you must have thought, like, what have I done the last 36 months? Like, why didn't someone take this out before? 100%. I mean, I, I, I think there's a, I mean, it's, it's kind of quoted through our different sources, but there's the five, five uh, stages of cancer grief. And one of them is, you know, one of the beginning stages is certainly anger. Like, why didn't somebody find yeah. this? Why, why did this happen to me? But I, I think you, you kind of go through that through, you know, the first few weeks. And I think at some point, hopefully you pick yourself up and decide that you're just ready to fight. And so once that happened, um, you know, the next step was to confirm that it was cancer. Um, so it, it could have been potentially it could be in a, could have been benign, but likelihood was not. So I went down that path. I, I went to go see uh, MD Anderson in Houston, uh, which is where I was. I was diagnosed originally in Houston, so they sent me over there, and I um, they, they did the biopsy a couple months later and uh, confirmed it was cancerous, and they gave me what stage? Um, a hope stage. Sta so the the cancer I have is a little bit tricky to stage because it's a slower growing cancer. But in my case, as in most cases with my kind of cancer, which is a sarcoma because it's slow, it tends to grow very big because for most of the time, it doesn't really interrupt any function. The only symptom that I had was uh, a small pain that I, that came up when I ran. And so um, they, 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 they ended up calling it a stage three, mainly because when they found it, it was, it was intruding a bunch of my other organs in that area. So it was not isolated. It was already, had already spread. Um, and, and, just, and so, just correct me if I'm wrong. Stage three means you can still do chemo and it's very much... Like what? What did they tell you is the is the success ratio of chemo or surgery of stage three versus stage four? Yeah, that, that, that's a good question. Um, I I think one clarifying thing to understand is stage three is still localized, but it means it's 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 spread to surrounding tissues. Stage four is when it's gone to distant tissues and it could be all over the body. Um, yeah, and so so mine was still localized, but it was it was, it was quite large, and the the concern was that obviously cancer cells break off and when they break off, they can travel anywhere else in the body. The most common places that you find cancer, cancer cells that have traveled could be in the lungs or the brain. And so they're, you know, they, they wanted to obviously start the treatment right away. Um, stage three uh, is definitely, I mean, I, I think all cancers are treatable via chemotherapy. What was, I think what made my sort of treatment options more difficult was my, 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 type of cancer sarcoma um, was not, is not very treatable via ke chemotherapy. So they told me there's probably a less than 25% chance that it would be very effective. Um, but of, they, they told me anyway. Or 25% uh, chance uh, of shrink, shrinking the tumor. Of shrinking um, the tumor, not via chemo, but via surgery? Via, via, via chemo. So the, the idea was right. to first shrink it via some, some mechanism like radiation and chemotherapy. And then, and then do the surgery. Um, the issue is, if, if the if if the if the chemo was ineffective in shrinking the tumor, then the tumor could grow even bigger. And literally, if, if that gave me a six month window, if the tumor did grow more, there was a chance they would never be able to take it out, which would be a much worse situation. Sorry, sorry, so, I didn't understand. I didn't understand that. Can you go back? Why, why would it grow with the chemo? Because um, if the chemo is if the chemo is in, ineffective, so there was only a twenty five percent chance that it could be effective. Okay, and so that twenty five percent chance of chemo working and shrinking and seventy and seventy five percent chance that it it's not working. It, it's or stable. It's, it's 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 it, so this is seventy five percent chance that the tumor stays stable, as they call it. So same okay. size or, same. or could just continue to grow in it because it's not reacting to the chemo. Okay. So, so the odds weren't great that that was going to work, um, but I but I figure if that's what they're telling me, that's what I'll do. But at the same time, I obviously um, I was encouraged to get a second opinion, so I, I ended up seeing a hospital in New York, uh, Sloan Kettering, and when I saw them, they they actually told me all the same facts that MD Anderson told me, but they told me because they thought chemo was not going to be very effective, why don't we just do surgery and get it out? And so I was. What was strange is you've got two of the top hospitals in the nation uh, giving you two completely different treatment options. So which do you choose? Um, and did you go back to Houston and tell them that in New York, they're telling me 
to do the surgery? I did actually. In fact, I told them, um, I told them, uh, I asked them if they would do uh, surgery without chemo and they were unwilling. And uh, in, in I, Houston, I, they were unwilling. Yeah. And I, I, I also think, I'm not sure if it was protocol or if it was the fact that the tumor was too large, they didn't feel confident taking it out without some sort of mechanism to shrink it first. But um, it, it was a choice for me at that point. And I, I thought, well, um, you know, chemo has its own benefits, but it can also damage the body in other ways. And if I have to do surgery in either situation, the surgery is maybe a little bit riskier if I did it up front, but at least it would be out and I could figure out how to deal with what's left afterwards. And so ult ultimately, I, I ended up choosing uh, the surgery option, New York. the surgical option first, yeah, in New York. And that was how long ago? I had surgery uh, October 23rd of last year. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So about Just literally one year months. ago. And yeah. since then, oh. they, were they able to get the whole mass out? Yeah, they, they, they luckily were able to get the whole mess out. Um, I, I spent about 30 days in the hospital, so I had a pretty big recovery. Uh, I, I think the surprising part was my, my, my surgery was supposed to be six hours and it ended up being 16 because of all the uh, complications. So my, you know, my, my mom and my, my, my cousin were there uh, in the hospital waiting room and I believe they went in at nine in the morning uh, with me and they, we came out at two, uh, I came out of the room at 2 a.m. Uh, the following day. Wow. Yeah. So. I want to, I want to, I want to know, maybe it's an unfair question and you can, you know, tell me to F off if you don't like the question. No, no, please. <laughs> but I want to know, Romain, how much did you think of death and, uh, and like not being here anymore and what you're leaving behind? Like, I don't know, just emotionally, mentally, did you get a will in place? Like, what are the things... Because when we go about our life, we don't really think about death. We know it's like yeah. taxes, it's yeah. going to happen. But at this age, we don't think about it on a daily basis unless the C word comes into the picture. Once that happens, I'm assuming, I don't know, but I'm assuming then that proximity to death or that conversation with God is closer. What Can you tell me your process and how you dealt with it? And did you think about it? Or was the mind never allowing you to go there and you were always like saying, I'm going to beat this. Like, just walk me through that. Before you no, start, I, I just want to add to what he's saying. And I am curious as well, because I looked at your Instagram, your personal and the one where you, you're personal about your cancer journey and you seem so mentally strong. That, that's um, why I, that's I what I'm asking. Oh. So yes, that's, that's why I'm curious if yeah. you don't mind us asking this. No, 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 please. These, these are great questions. And yeah, you know, depression, so much of, you know, did you get into depression? I want to know the whole mental state of what happens when, when death is next door. No, no, I, I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I really have to attribute so much of this mental fortitude to, you know, the Indian immigrant story and how I was raised and just the ability to, to, to grind and push through. Um, but, but surely, you know, when you, you know, even the most mentally fit person, when they're faced with death, they'll break down. And I, I certainly had my days. I, I, I cried multiple days um, in front of my parents, in front of friends. It was very hard. And I think I, I want I want to say probably everybody goes through that same sort of emotional roller coaster in the beginning. I think what's different, no, I don't want to say different, but I think what I, I, I've always done with any sort of obstacle in my life is I, I, I first get very angry and that anger turns to motivation. And for me, after after three, four, five days of hearing this, I was like, F this, I'm going to get over this and I'm going to prove to the world that I can rebuild stronger than I was before. And so for me, it's almost like a mission now to, 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 to first get back to be able to run, which I've started very slowly. I have some, some challenges regarding that, but I, I, I'm fully 100% motivated to be stronger, fitter, younger, more vibrant than I was before. And that's, that is my mission. And I want to show the world and hopefully help others along the way. So, so, so my process was, 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 you know, very much about that. I, I, I had some very low lows, but I think a lot of it has to do with my entrepreneurial journey and just my Indian roots and kind of growing up as, as a underdog. And I, I've sort of taken those skills that I've learned over the last 30 years and use it to, to sort of uh, overcome this, this, this disease. Let, let, let's get into the low lows. 
let's, Hold let's, on, let's talk about it. You're, yeah. you're, I'm guessing, I saw you went to UT Austin for your bachelor's from mm -hmm. 94 to 98. So I'm assuming you're our age, you're 47, 48? 48, yep. 48, okay. All right. For a bachelor party? I thought he was single. A bachelor <laughs> degree. <laughs> ah. You'll be invited, Ahmed. Don't worry. You Americans. <laughs> You Americans. Okay. So, um, I, not that I want to emphasize on the low, low, but I want to understand, like, obviously first you're angry because the th 36 months you feel a wasted time where you should have detected this earlier. Then, uh, as you're going through Houston and New York, you're going and making the tough decision with family consultation and Google and Google. You're also yeah, going Google. through emotional roller coaster. You're crying daily, weekly, monthly, doesn't matter. It's obviously something that emotionally is draining. And then something happens that you have that ability to motivate yourself and say, F this, fuck cancer, I'm going to beat it. Yep. I want to understand that process. Like, is it, is it a week, a month? And in the same year where you say I'm motivated, are you the next day crying again and upset about it? Is it a journey and every day gets better? Walk me through that, uh, you know, that journey. Yeah, no, it, it's, a, it's a great question. Um, let me first say that the journey is never linear. So yeah, while I would say I get better, I certainly yeah. still go down certain days, right? So sure. but, but, I think it's but very the, much like that. When you go down, is the low as low as the beginning low? No, or are you I, improving? I, I think I've gotten my head wrapped around this much, much better than I did before. So I, I, I want to say that I'm hopefully past that point of thinking about death all the time because I don't, I, I quite honestly, I don't anymore. And it doesn't bother me. Um, we'll get into it in a bit, but it doesn't, you know, the, the fact that it could come back again um, doesn't bother me. It's just part of, part of life. So at some point it just becomes part of your day-to-day -day existence. But for me, the journey, I, I, I think again, you know, luckily enough, I, I've, I just learned to, to, to instill this sort of self-motivation in myself, but that, that, that doesn't happen alone. There's a process. It requires a lot of, you know, I, I meditate. I do a lot of things to, to sort of uh, keep my mental capacity, you know, as high as I can. I, I exercise every day. I mean, these are all things that are really important even before I, I, I start my day just to make sure that I'm ready to fight, you know, ready to face whatever's, whatever battle that day brings to me. But, but beyond that, I, I think just the number one thing that I would recommend and that, that certainly worked with me is you've got to instill a sense of hope um, in yourself. And, and, and the way I do that is really, you know, as an entrepreneur, I listen to podcasts of people that have had built great businesses better through, through tougher circumstances than me. And I, I did that the same for my cancer journey is either listening to podcasts where people had much worse prognosis uh, than I did. And and pu I've pulled out of it and are, you know, decades uh, in remission or, you know, meeting other people that have gone through personal friends or family that have gone through my, my uh, sort of my journey and learning from them. And, and also th they're doing fine. So really building that, that hope. And I think the other thing too, is you've got to have a sense of purpose, whatever that is. And I think those two things, you know, they, they say it, they say it, but I think it's very universal. I, I think with, with hope and purpose, you can pull yourself out of any situation in life. It doesn't matter if you're on the streets, whatever. If you, if you build that sense of building yourself, knowing that the next day is going to be better than the, the previous, then there's always that drive to move forward. And so that's, that's something that I, I, as a cancer, of course, I've done this before in other realms of my personal life, but now I had to learn how to do this in, in my cancer journey. And so that's what I do to sort of really pull me forward every day. You run marathons that mentally already <laughs> tells us where you are. We yeah. just spoke yeah. uh, last week to a 16 year old girl who crossed the English Channel and swam for 11 hours. Oh, for incredible. Years. incredible. Wow. wow. See, that makes me feel terrible now. <laughs> no, you've ran marathons in 13 countries. Like, Crazy. Yeah. yeah. I've ran, I, we told a previous guest too, who's a marathon runner. I said, I've ran three half marathons. And every time I think of running a full, I think about, it, I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll train. And I'm like, nah, I think 13 oh, you, is perfect. 13 you miles. You haven't got the buggers yet. Once you get the bug, it's very addicting. Yeah. I think but so. The half marathons one are great. It's fighting that bug, right? It's like, don't do it. So you said you started running again. You're I also did. Did. a surfer. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, seem, you look fit. You like you seem quite fit. Like workout. Yeah, 
I, I, I am. And, and again, it's, for me, it's not about the physical workout. It's about the sort of mental strength that it builds in, in me. It's, it's become, to be honest, I, I started working out, I think, at the gym when I was 13 or 14. I was probably the only Indian person at the gym that I went to. Uh, I mean, I started way back in the 90s. And it's, it's now just become such a habit that if I, I, if I don't go, it's like not brushing your teeth one day. I just feel off. And it's so it's, important to my in the mental... 30s. It shows. Yeah, so, thirties. No, you look great. <laughs> you look great. It's, but but for me, it, it's just I, I've evolved in in such a way that it's it, it is a part of my life, and it's something that I I can probably never get rid of, which is a good thing. But it's also I'm a bit obsessive about it. Are you yeah. are you in remission today? I uh, I am. I mean, I had a uh, small relapse about a month ago, and so as I had mentioned, the the, the danger of any cancer is Cancer really just takes one cell to sort of ignite in, ignite the fire. So that cell can go anywhere in your body and it can lodge itself and start growing a new tumor. So they they have been monitoring me every three months. Um, and in May, they found something very small in my lung, um, which I think most people have these small, they call them nodules um, in, 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 in their lungs. And usually 99% of the time they're benign. In my case, they were, they were like, it's probably benign, but we need to watch it. So fast forward a few months, um, the nodule that they saw in May and uh, when they saw it in September, it had grown two or three times. So it was growing quite fast. Um, so this one was smaller. Um, I think it was maybe a centimeter and a half and two uh, or, or two centimeters. But it was suspicious enough that they, they were like, let's get it out immediately. And so I, I actually just had surgery again two weeks ago. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm recovering quite well. I, I, <laughs> I've already been on the stair step for this morning and the cardio and on the bike. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking to start running again, hopefully in the next week or so. I, I don't think my doctors are too happy with, with, with all this, but uh, they want me to slow down. But that's just not my, how my brain works. But yeah, I, uh, and yeah, I I, you keeping yourself so physically in good shape has something to do with that you know i mean your your body's able to fight this faster maybe i don't know i'm not a I, doctor so uh, how old I, are you Romain? I, i'm 48 oh my age yeah, yeah. we just talked about that yeah. what that, that is my age <laughs> it's a good age yeah i said you went you got your bachelor's between 94 and 98 so i'm assuming you're 47 or 48. Ah, okay got it i i i, I didn't know what bachelor's was okay 48 yeah okay good same you got age. Stuck on bachelor's yeah uh, i got stuck are... in bachelor's yeah <laughs> yeah so so How... just to, to ahead, answer your ahead. question yeah. they, they're taking it out um the surgery was successful they they don't see anything right now um so Technically, I, I assume I'm cancer free. There, there may be some other things they recommend I, that I do, and I'll find out in the next few weeks. But okay. generally, again, I'm just moving forward with my life. I, 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 I feel great. They don't see anything right now, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Who, who's going through this with you? Um, like, who's is it? Girlfriend? Is it uh, mom, dad, a counselor? Like, I mean, this doesn't seem like something anyone should go through alone. So who's the partner in crime that's going through this and knows everything you're going through mentally and is there with you? Yeah, that's it's a it's a good question. And I think it's so important to have that support system. I mean I mean for me it's it's really I'm not I'm not married, I'm single. Um so it's it's my mother who's 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 been there throughout. She's yeah, she's she's a rock and she's again, she's she's tougher than I am. And so she's been so amazing to have by my side. I also have of course, you know, close group of friends all over um, that have given their support as well. But really, day in, day out, it's, it's my mother um, who's, who's been helping me. Actually, whenever I'm sick, my mom's the rock next to me also. Yeah. Always. Some, good, some good Indian food always does the trick. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, huh? when I'm sick, I call my mom and she just like constantly is checking on me. And that's what yeah, I need. Well, when I want money, I call my dad. <laughs> <laughs> And everything else is my mom. Yeah, that's it. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so tell us about this Instagram uh, page, twenty four seven manifesto. Uh, why, why do this? Why be so public about it? What's the purpose? Um, you know, for me, I, I, as I mentioned before, I think you've got to find purpose out of everything to really pull you through tough situations. Uh, you know, my my, I don't want to say my cancer is better or worse than anybody else. It is what it is, but 
in, in certain ways, my, you know, being my recovery was, I'm sorry, my surgery was so long and my recovery was pretty intense. I mean, they, they cut through seven or eight body parts. Um, so it, it, it was, it was, it was a long recovery. Um, I, I just felt that it does me no good to have it in my head. I wanted to just at least start putting it out there because it helps me to almost journal about what my thoughts are and kind of document my, my, my journey for myself, see what's working, see what's not. And, and maybe along the way also, you know, inform family and friends and maybe, maybe help people. So it really just started off as a personal diary or blog. And I, I, I you know, it's, it, it's open to the public. Um, you know, I have obviously lots of friends and family on there, but, but I really want to take what I've learned and, and inspire and help other people. Like I said, my mission is to build back even better than I was before. And I wouldn't have had this purpose if I hadn't gone through this journey. Yeah. I can imagine you're inspiring so many because even when I went to look at it, you just how mentally strong you are um, in those videos is inspiring to someone who, you know, whether they have cancer or not, um, it's, it's pretty amazing. I, so I'm weak. When I look at those things, it upsets me <laughs> and it spoils my day. Yeah, he texted me know? last night that he was he was pretty upset about it. Yeah, the no, fact meaning, that you were diagnosed that was, with it. Actually, that was more is what's happening in Israel and you know Middle East. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, well, thanks you, for that. I, I I have to say, you know, I, I think cancer is one of those things where it it really brings out the bright, the best and the brightest in most people. Like it 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 really does. I think a lot of people step up in a way that they've never been able to their entire lives for many people. And it's because you're really forced in a situation. You don't have a choice. Yeah. And sure, I, I think choice. people, I think people discover a strength in them that they, that they never had before. And it leads to so many other positive changes in their life. So if you ever talk to a cancer survivor, I, I, I would, my guess is probably three quarters to maybe all of them will say at the time it was horrible, but I, in hindsight, it was the best thing that happened to me. So, so are you now are you now that you're healthy and and you know in a good mental place are you spending more money are you uh i don't know <laughs> taking bigger that's risks that's always a problem no are you taking bigger risks with women that before maybe you were a bit shy now you're like <laughs> going for it no i want to know like what's changed not in mental what's changed in action and in daily yeah, expenditures sure. now that you've been through this experience like are you now living your PDD life. Wow. <laughs> you had, that's like the wrong way to go. You don't know what, you get what all... I mean when I say the PDD life, yeah. right? So, are you cooking up every night? <laughs> yeah, like basically, are you like let loose? Are you having fun? Are you like relaxed? Are you, you know? Yeah. How are you different today? Yes. That, well, that, 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 mean, should have, that should have been the question. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, Sabrina, I, Sabrina's I, the good one. Sabrina's the good host. So the P Diddy life. Wow. Okay. That, that was that was prior to that's where you where you and I met. The P Diddy life. During the P Diddy days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. No, the um yeah, I mean look, I, my life is about having fun. And I or Jay Z, yeah, exactly. Um my life is always I, I've always I've always been very spontaneous and I I, I really even as a kid, I, I think as an Indian kid, I, I gave my parents a heart attack and probably everybody in our Indian community a heart attack about, I had long hair, I had earrings, I wanted, I ended up starting a fashion company, all, everything I wasn't supposed to do. So I, I think that sort of zest to push life all the way to the edge has always been in me. And it's, it's, it's definitely still there. I think what I do, what I do differently now is I'm much more deliberate. So I don't, I, I, I certainly look at activities or even, um, uh, you know, just people that I, I have known throughout the years that could be acquainted or whatever. I, I really try to be very deliberate about what I'm doing and not waste any time. I can tell you for sure that uh, when it comes to my professional career, I, I'm much more focused on delivering the outcome that I want to see versus just kind of being in, in limbo and, and everything else. So everything else, I think everything in my life is taking on sort of a very a lens of being very action oriented and let's do this now. Versus let's wait till everything is, is perfect and yeah. we can do this down yeah. the road because you just don't know if that's going to come. Right. Yeah. So Which let's talk about your also. professional career. You're like, you know, S group capital, just, you know, in your own words, what are you proud about? You know, tell us a little bit about it. 
Um, sure. It, uh, S Group Capital is a um, independent sponsored private equity platform that I started with with a partner uh, almost ten years ago, and we we essentially um, look for small businesses across the United States, and uh, when we find a business we like, we'll raise the capital, buy the business, sit on the board, um, have some equity, work with the management team, grow the businesses, and eventually sell them. So it's um, I, I, I sort of fell into it serendipitously. Um, I, I met somebody that was in the private equity business. This was actually something that I'd always wanted to do since I was a kid and watch, watching the, the movie Wall Street, I think. Um, but but the idea of buying, I, you know, business business to me, I mean, I think like you probably, Ahmed, I, I, I love it in the sense that it's, it's a game for me. Like it's very fun, the challenge of coming up with answers that have no, there's multiple solutions to the same, to, to the same problem. And so I think um, just being an entrepreneur really drives me. And, and the idea of being involved in different businesses through acquiring them is, is what I find super interesting. And then you, you can kind of take ideas from different businesses and apply them to what you do in other businesses and, and whatnot. So I really enjoy the process and it's something that I had wanted to get into. And so I learned through this guy um, who was in the business for, for decades. And I, I basically told him back in, I think, 2014, look, I want to learn this business. I'll work for you for, you for free. And so uh, he allowed me to, and I, I really learned the business from the ground up. I, I, I it's, it's, it's one of those uh, just hustle stories. I, I, I helped acquire our first business by calling 200 investment firms uh, and the last one saying yes. So it's, it's just, yep. it's just a, it's, it's a story of grinding. Yeah. I, I actually don't, um, I don't enjoy that much. The, the hustle, the grinding. I don't know if it's my old age. I think I'd rather just sit with Sabrina and talk to people like you and just <laughs> get the interesting story. The only thing, the only thing I got from uh, watching that uh, Wall Street movie was that was the Leo one, right? The no, the original one. Michael oh, Douglas. come on, you got the classic one. The oh, Michael okay. Douglas one. That, that oh, one Oscar, okay, the Michael Douglas so one. Yeah, yeah. Which was the Leo one? Wasn't that the new one? That's um. I think that's Gatsby. No, no the one with Leo was with like a nice one. suit. Isn't he like the Yes, I don't remember Wall what Street? that's called, but I it's not Wall Street. Street. It's great Gatsby, but it's great. No, Gatsby, no, I think I think it was a Wall Street also movie where Leo's yeah. there. I mean, people are gonna laugh at us because it's such a classic. But anyway, <laughs> I thought after that movie, I only wanted to be like Leo and date younger women. That's you yeah, know, yeah, that's yeah. the only thing I got yeah. of that movie. Not the money part. <laughs> I actually find Wall Street and stock markets and and private equity. I find it uh, honestly boring. I don't enjoy it. I mean, no, I that, did banking, right. but I don't enjoy it. No, that's that's right. I mean, for, for for me, like I I I really love people. Um, and and for me, the ability, I, I I'm not I'm not somebody that buys a business and and trying to financially engineer my my exit. I I really do get involved with the people that I work with, and you know, and unfortunately, I think it's also a downfall where I've gotten involved in situations maybe I shouldn't have, where I, I put out a lot, I don't get the same in return, but you learn as you go. But for me, it gives me the ability to just really work with people closely in a one-on-one -on -one basis. And I don't know everything, so I learn myself. And it's, it's, a, it's a great sort of mutually beneficial sort of relationship uh, when I get involved. I, I like companies. stories. I like interesting stories. I like inspiring stories. He's living like vicariously people. through our guests. No, I like, I, like, I like people who motivate. I like the, the stories that Sabrina and I have most enjoyed and the guests we most enjoyed are the ones, honestly, where we didn't know what to expect. That's why when you ask me, hey, should we get on a call and do some sort of a prep? I'm like, you know what? No need. We prefer like authentic conversations. We don't know where right. it's going to go. We don't know it's going to be 40 minutes talking about something as gruesome as cancer. But right. we just we just go with the flow. We find these things interesting. And then no, no, no. at the end of the show, we, you know, we just got to know you better. Right. I want to know, how did you start a fashion business? That was one of your first businesses, correct? Yeah, yeah. You know... Um... I, I think growing up in an Indian household, I I was very much sort of steered to, especially mostly by my dad, to be a doctor or engineer. And so I have this, I mean, I was an uh, only child, so I was always, I was also very independent. And so I have, you know, one shoulder saying to follow, you know, be the good Indian kid. And I had one shoulder that was trying to be cool and popular and, and do everything against me with the right? black kids. So, yeah, you were, the you were the hip hop kids. That's it. That, that that was that was probably me in high school. Um, you, that's anyway, what you wanted I, to say. I, yeah, well, I, I I think if you asked me in my twenties what I wanted to do, I'd probably say be the first Indian rapper. So, uh, 
you, me, and Sabrina. I, I, you know? I still, I still want to live that lifestyle, but one too. <laughs> yeah, I, Sabrina's I, I dream in her wedding was for boys to men to come and sing. That was Sabrina's dream. Oh, perfect. Yes. Yes. And then we, uh, Amit and my brother found a group um, that was like a boys to men cover group, and. Uh -huh. At my wedding, they came up to my husband and I at the reception and said, look, we got this group, but they literally broke up today. And oh, I was no. like, no. <laughs> so what did you do? So we didn't have, we didn't have boys to men at my, my wedding. I so said, I didn't want to join in. Yeah. yeah. I signed. I um, organized a Michael Jackson reunion. I have to see this video. I, I organized, you know, two days before the 9-11 incident. I think it was 7 Eleven uh, at the Madison Square Garden, uh, Michael Jackson and his whole family, the reunion. So we, we, wow, we organized tickets for that event instead. Oh, yeah. amazing. That's, 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 that's worth it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, was, that was uh, a Once one in concert, lifetime. I would say. That was the one concert that I was blown away by. Yeah, best yeah. concert yeah, ever. Okay. Yeah, I, I yeah, can imagine. Too. Anyway, but, back to the fashion business. Yeah. So anyway, so I, I, I'm saying all this because I always kind of had an idea of what I wanted to do. I think I learned when I, when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do in high school, uh, I, I, I kind of looked around at my family friend circles, like who, who really has a life that I want to emulate? And it was all always business owners. And so I, 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 I started steering at that in that direction, but I also have, I also have sort of a creative bent. So I enjoy things that involve design. I like architecture. I like interior design. I like photography. And so I think because of that, I, I was also drawn to to, uh, to fashion. And specifically, I, I you know, in, in high school, I think I was just kind of looking for a way to rebel and stand out. And so, like I said, I had long hair, earrings, and I started dressing really well in high school. And I think most people from high school will remember me in that sense. So from that, I, I just kind of developed this 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 interest in fashion because it involved, my, you know, things that were important to me, plus the idea of design and, and combining business and creativity. So um, when I went to UT, uh, I met with the uh, counselor the first day, and right away I have my dad sitting on my shoulder, and then I have what I want to do. I tell the counselor that I want to go, I want to start a fashion business, but I want to be pre-med. What, what do you, what do you, what do you think I should do? And she started laughing and basically walked me out of the room because she, she was like, I've never heard of this before. I think you need to figure out like what, which direction you want to go. So uh, anyway, uh, you know, I, I, I ended up joining the business school at UT. I graduated with a BBA in the late nineties. Um, and then I started working for a local apparel company in Texas for about a year. And I, <laughs> I think, I think a, a year into it, I was just getting restless, and I was like, I want to go to New York. And I told my mom, and I had no plan. I just came up here, and uh, within within a month of her, me telling her that, I just packed up two two suitcases, showed up at my friend's door in New York, and and moved here. And um, you know, from there, I, I ended up getting a job six months later. Interestingly enough, my first day at that job was nine eleven. Um, so that happened, um, continued working there, but, but along the way, I, I still had this idea that I want to be a business owner. I wanted to be in fashion. So I'm going to start a label at some point. So I, again, another, another hustle story. I, I ended up volunteering for this fashion organization where I met an editor of a magazine. I started talking to the editor. I told him I had this whole fashion line, which I had not even created one single sketch. He was like, sure, send me what you have. I sent him some sketches a week later. He's like, these are great. When can I write about you? So then, so then he writes about me, which is some sketches. And then I'm like, well, I have these, I have this, I have an article written about me. Now I have to actually go, uh, before I embarrass myself, I have to go make samples. So then I figured, I figured out how to make samples. Um, and then I got samples made and I submitted them to a contest. Uh, and then I win this contest. And then this, this contest gets published into the major fashion industry publication. My boss reads about it just a month later. <laughs> and so he was, he was very supportive, but at that point it, it had gone to zero to a hundred literally in three or four months so quickly that I, I told my parents, look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here in New York. I had this opportunity to start this brand. I already have some press. I already have uh, a, an award without even That's a line. I want to go to, I, I want to dedicate my full time to this. And they were very supportive. Uh, my dad was less so in the beginning, but even it was just my name. It was just uh, Kapadia, my last name. 
which actually yeah. in, 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 in the, the name derivative is actually cloth crater. So it's actually just going back to my, my ancient oh, roots. Your roots. Um, did yeah. you buy kapadia.com, the domain name? I did. And I, I don't think I have it anymore, unfortunately, but maybe I should bring it back. I was going to say but that's what, probably worth a lot of money. What, what was interesting um, is, I mean, within literally within a year of being in New York, I was in the cover of Maxim magazine. Um, I had opened my first account and I opened my accounts by literally taking my suitcases that I had moved here with, throwing a bunch of samples in there, taking a cab downtown to Soho and walking into the store and requesting a, an appointment with the buyer. And I did that three or four times and got a few sales out of it. So that's how I started. And it, it built and built and built. And I was lucky enough to work with a lot of celebrity clients. I had I had great press. Uh, you know, every, every major magazine you can think I wrote about me I had stores around the world. And I, I, I think, um, you know, at some point in your late twenties, early thirties, your, your mind starts to shift about what you want to do and what you want out of your life. And while I enjoyed what I was doing and I still love design and I still love, uh, you know, fashion and, 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 and things that are related, I, I, I decided it, at some point that it, 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 it wasn't something that I wanted to do for 40 years. I had this business and my only, my only, if I were to continue, you know, that potentially would be the only path that I would ever take. And I, I really had started to question whether or not I wanted to do this for the rest of my life. And at some point I, so I decided it wasn't, I, I got bored. And also I, yeah. I, I think, I think being from, you know, Texas where everything is shiny coming from New York, I, I, I bought into this whole story of, I want to, I want to, you know, I want to have this fashion business and, jet set around the world and it's not like that you, i mean i there were nights where i was sleeping on my factory floor to get deliveries done on time so it was really the grind that wore me down um for the amount of work yeah. and, and so on, on the surface i think i think there was one of the big lessons i learned uh, especially when it comes to entrepreneurship is there's there's a big difference between what the world perceives and what you're actually doing and and right. so I, I i think it's a it's very important to to realize that just totally. because somebody you know, I mean, that's actually what Instagram is built on, right? It's it's about, a, for many people, it's it's I hate to say it, a fake life. Yeah, that's, it's an image. Not, it's, it's an image, right? I don't, I don't so post. I, I don't post on Instagram, but yeah, I, I don't post very often either. I, I really just do because of my 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 journey my journey page. But but it's something that I I learned personally by being involved in the industry and, and realizing, you know what, it's not all that it's cut out to be. Um, I can still take parts of it that I like and apply it to other things. So. I, at that point, I I, um, I decided my only choice was to either sell it or close it down. Um, I was actually in India meeting with potential buyers, but it was the worst time. It was 2008, 2009. And so I, I eventually just shut it down and I went back to school. And uh, so I took a year off, went to business school, came out of it, um, yeah. joined another no startup. Regrets. No regrets, no right? Regrets. You enjoyed the experience, yeah. you move on. 100%. I got to see the world in that year. I went to an international business school. Uh, in Seattle. Um, so I got to see the world. I got to meet so many interesting people. And, and more than anything else, I, I, I felt that sense of growth that I had been missing for, for the last eight or nine years because I just felt yeah. so stagnant in my business. So that it was a great way to, for me to recharge. I came back uh, to the States. I joined another startup in the retail and apparel world, uh, helped that company raise money and the company was eventually sold. And at that point is when I joined or helped start S Group. And since that time, I've also acquired an events company down in Texas, which is where I'm spending a lot of my time. So up until that point, I mean, for most of my adult life, I've been in New York and I've, I've started spending back uh, more time more recently back in Houston, which is where I grew up as well. But I'm, hap I'm happy to split time between both. How come no girlfriend? You're a good looking guy. You're fit. You're well traveled oh, you. between Texas um, and New York. I would say there's ample opportunities. Yeah, I was thinking so, that too. How are you single? I mean, are you picky no. or are you looking for an all American girl or I mean, what happened? No, you know, like the Indian? Man, it's, man, it's, 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 it's funny. Like the older you get, the closer you get to Indian roots. I would love to have an Indian, Indian girlfriend or wife, but it's also, I, I, I'm not picky as far as I've dated everything under the sun. And I, it's just really somebody that I can, I'm compatible with mentally. I think that's most important. Uh, the reason I'm single, I think is. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Finish your thought. And then I'll. I, I, I just, I just think for, for, for me, like I, I, you know, I was having a lot of fun in my thirties and even early forties and it was important, but it wasn't important enough to, to, to prioritize above everything else. And, and, and I think now given all that's happened, I just really, I just want like somebody ride or die right next to me, right. Going through this with me. And it, it makes, I think timing is everything. And I, I, I think it took 
this happening to me to make me realize that really? I, I want somebody by my side. Yeah. And I, I, I'll tell you something else also that happens. My dad passed away in uh, 2022. And I think just being, oh, you know, my mom and yeah. I, yeah. So my mom and I just yeah. being a very small family, I, I, I think to myself, well, you know, I, I, I want to have a big family. I remember going to India growing up and, you know, spending time on a relative's floor and the whole family would just show up. And I love that. And, and so I, I, I don't want to be alone in this world for the rest of my life. And so for me, it's just, it's become so important the last few years. And so I'm starting to definitely get back out there more. Um, and it, it's it's really just my ability to do so has been dictated by my recovery. But now that I'm getting back to normal, um, I, it's much easier to to do so. So hoping to find somebody. Do you think your health situation is a turnoff for women? Um, that's a great question. And I'll tell you how I, I, I think if I just wrote into, if I was just on an app and said, I have, I'm, a, I'm recovering from cancer, I think a lot of people would say, I don't want to date this guy. But I think if they hear me, I think though they realize it's a strength, and so I, I look at it as a positive. I, I think it's so, it's it's a, it's a superpower. So, you, so it is a turn off in terms of you think for an app, but when in person, well, I, when I, I I think I don't want to say they turn off, but I think it would turn people away if that's all they knew about me, because then it it's not it's not about the diagnosis; it's about the person that I am that deals with that di diagnosis, and I think. When, when all you can do is read about something and that's the impression that you get, and that's the person that's going to stick in their head. This guy, had, uh, this guy's potentially going to be my husband. He has cancer. Uh, this is probably not a good story. Right. And the thing is, there's so much more beyond that, that I can, I can bring into the world from a partner as a father, whatever that is, that I think somebody can gain from me in the context of meeting me. So I, I don't, I don't look at it from, I don't look at it as a disadvantage at all. In fact, I feel that now that I've been through this, I have a story that most people can't tell. And I think that's a real, that's an advantage. There's a, um, I saw we have, there's someone I know in New York City that follows you on your cancer journey, who is also single. And I'm not going to say her name here, but after I'm going to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to call her right. out, but I was just thinking and I'm like, oh, this could be good. I'm a doctor wait, party, we'll you ready? Wait, wait, Romaine, I'm getting on right, right now in Sabrina's thing. So-and-so <laughs> 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 and so follows and the I was like, Oh, I wonder the if difference is, Romaine, the difference is I would say the girl's name. That's he totally would. Yeah, yeah. Do it. <laughs> okay, Romaine, um, we ask all our guests um, this question, uh, what is their definition of success and whether that has normally, I say, evolved over decades. But in your case, I want to say, has that evolved, uh, you know, over, you know, your diagnosis of cancer? What is your definition of success? What, what does success look like for you today? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to give you just a very generic answer, but it's it's true. I I, I think um, I mean to me, success is just about being happy and fulfilled where you're at. And I think I I think what this diagnosis, what it's changed about me is, uh, you know, I, I think most people's anxieties and fears are about the future. It's will I will I achieve this? Will this happen to my kid? Whatever else. And it's it, it's what it's done is it makes me look at happiness in a much more short-term perspective am i happy today that i did what i did i do what i needed to do today to be better tomorrow and, and, and because of that then every day becomes happy right and so it, 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 it it's very much about that and i i i think just you know more concretely i think one of the things unfortunately is especially when i was young my my definition of success was 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 very monetarily driven and I, I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that again immigrant story my dad came here with nothing my parents came here with nothing and i just wa saw how hard they worked and that's kind of one of what i think propelled me to be an entrepreneur and hopefully be very successful and and and, and that's kind of you know as as an indie kid growing up sometimes that's how they measure you is what schools you get into what your occupation is and so i i had a lot of that I don't say baggage, it's driven me in certain ways, but I think it, with that, you need some other balance that comes through other, other things. And so I think, I think with, with that, I'm just much more of a balanced person. So I do want to be successful professionally, but I think, you know, the, the personal is as important if not more important. And so I, I just look at, if I can be happy every day, then I, that means I'll be happy for the rest of my life. And so I look at it from that perspective. Nice. That's like a Sabrina type answer. 
yeah, that, <laughs> he's happy. If I'm not happy, what's the point? Like I haven't. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's that's your that's your barometer. That's everybody's right. barometer. Is happiness. If my three kids don't go to Harvard, Stanford, or oh, Yale, God. we failed. Uh, you're, 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 I love it. I'm joking. I'm joking. I don't even think, I don't even think education, especially with AI and the way things are going, is even relevant today. But anyway, it's not about no, that today. I, I, no, it's it, it's true. One of the things I think it's great is I, I I think the the expectation of what what you're supposed to be as an Indian kid has completely changed now. And I I I, I think you know whether it's people in entertainment or any you know anything creative whatever else that just wasn't around it was, especially when I started my career I remember going to dinner parties and people would ask me how's fashion I'm like what do you mean do you what, what's in what's in season or how's my business or like <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to I, I, I don't know how to answer that so but 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 the idea is like you know with with I I, I guess Indians uh, establishing themselves in every profession across the world I think that idea of what an Indian can be is has completely changed and opened up, and I'm so, to be honest, I've, I've, I'm so proud to be Indian because it's, 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 it's never been, a, I think, never been a better time to, 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 to be Indian and, and see what all that's going on. Yeah, Sabrina, the, are white Americans more pissed off that are brown? What? Are white Americans? Are white Americans more pissed off with brown people taking their leadership roles, or are they more pissed off with women? taking the leadership roles what what would piss a white american more fight 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 or does I, it depend if you're a republican or democrat I, no i would say a woman that pisses them off more than a brown guy i think so yeah. as long as it's a man in leadership you know yeah i, 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 I would agree a woman so america is more sexist than racist when it comes to pay and leadership roles. So I would say a woman. Yeah. I, what do you think, Romaine? Yeah, I, I, I think that sounds right. I, I, I think, I think the man versus woman dichotomy is much stronger than yeah. a different race. So I, 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 I would, I would tend to agree with that. And then we have a brown woman running for the, you know, top office position in this country. I That's a slap. I thought she won Sabrina. I thought she's already <laughs> so ahead. The well, polls, she she's so ahead. <laughs> the media is saying she's so ahead. I, I, I don't know if you saw this old meme when she became vice president, but it was an Indian, Indian dad saying, how come you only became vice president? Yeah. <laughs> it's so true, right? That's, that's I the, never that's saw the, that, but that's, that's the Indian so dad. true. Yeah. My yeah, dad, yeah. I used to bring him like an A minus and he's like, yeah, Why it's not good enough. I'm like, it's still an A, you know, but that is yeah, so exactly. funny. I saw that one. Yeah. Hey, I want to know before we get to our rapid fire, who who inspires you these days? Ah, uh, wow, that's a tough one. Um, Kamla or Elon? <laughs> you know, it's that's a rapid fire I, question. I, I know it's uh, wow, that's that's that, that, that's I I think people inspire me in different in different genres. I, I think it's hard for me to be inspired by one person altogether, but I mean, it, it really kind of depends whether it's business or. Give us I mean, a couple of names. Give us a couple of yeah, business people. I, I, I'll give you a very like for for example. I think somebody that inspires me with his strength, uh, and it's it's, it's going to sound so corny, but like, uh, are you guys familiar with David Goggins? In his yes. story, yeah. Yes. So, yeah. So he, he's I actually he's, your when you your story and your mental aptitude reminds me a lot of Goggins. He's like yeah, this he, guy who's the number one disciplinarian. He's like yeah. a go getter. He's got books. Yeah. He's a famous. Uh, I know a podcast. I, I, obviously, in the Huberman Lab, they talk about him and Joe Rogan. And okay, um, yeah. He's, anyway, he's, sorry, he's, tell, he's, tell us a little bit about, about him, please. Yeah, so I, absolutely. So I, I, you know, I, I listen to podcasts. Um, it, yeah, and, and so I, I stumbled upon him. I don't know years ago, and and his story was he was he was just kind of a nobody going through life, and one day he saw he saw an advertisement to become a, a marine, or I'm sorry, a Navy SEAL. And so he was like, you know what? I'm just tired of being a nobody. Um, early 20s, I, I want to go do something with my life. So he pursued that path. He had failed a few times, but he ultimately became a Navy SEAL. And I think he became. He, he's also he's he's also became um, uh, uh, Green Beret, or he, he's he's achieved every special forces designation in the military. 
And then if that wasn't enough, he's he's gone out and done superhuman feats like running an ultra marathon of 100 miles without ever training. And he almost killed himself. And so he, his his whole story is, look, I came from nothing. I, I, I taught myself to become a Navy SEAL. And I've used that discipline now to do all these other crazy, crazy human feats. And he really just talks about disciplining your mind. And he, he talks about going to a dark place to have to get to the light. And, and, you know, is, is, is really everything about him is his, is his mental ability to get through anything. And so he's, I think he's very sort of, he would, I, I don't think his intention was to be on TV and be a, uh, uh, he's internally, internally motivated, but I think when his story came out, it just caught on because it's so crazy. And so I, I I've also, I, I think what inspires me about him is I, again, I, I think you guys have sort of picked up on it. I, I'm everything about me is my mind. If I can control my mind, I can control everything that happens around me. And so, um, this guy, the, the way he's, he's a black dude, he's 49. I looked him he's up. The fittest, he's the fittest guy around. Yeah. He's got a book called can't hurt me. And he yeah. is the, 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 you know, like what they say, if, you know, if you look it up in the encyclopedia and you look at the word, you know, discipline, oh, or, he is a you know, books. Yeah. There'll be a picture yeah, of does. him. Yeah, he's he's very inspiring. And he speaks very well as well. I'm going to have to. Yeah. No free gonna... days, Sabrina. No free days. You yeah. Go, you feel tired? <laughs> no. Yeah. You go. When you're tired, that's when you go to the gym. That's when you work mm -hmm. out. And, yeah. and you feel better because you worked hard, even though you were tired. That's you when your mind takes over your body. You'll come whisper in your ear and say, wake up, motherfucker, at 3.30 in the morning. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, that's, that's what he does if you if you hire him. I think for for coach. Yeah. Oh no, so a lot of people sleep and they get up at three thirty in the morning and they're like, "No, I'm going to go back to bed." And they're like, "No, what, what would this guy do?" No, no, it's in there. But yeah. if you hire him, he actually does it in your ear. <laughs> no, he does. I think that's he's not. That's what I've read. He's in the Tony he's, Robbins he's level that. now, right? He's like yeah, at he's, the. He's pretty. He's pretty big, but CEOs of the top companies yeah. in the world are hiring him, and so I. I was reading some anecdote where the, the CEO hired him because he thought it was going to be helping get better and didn't realize how much torture was to be had David Goggins in your house where every morning you say, wake up motherfucker at three 30 in the morning. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and it's like a million dollars a day or something stupid. It's like top I'm dollar. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Yes. I'm sure. Yeah. All right. Rapid fire. Sabrina, will you start? Uh, we're going to ask some stupid questions. If you can just keep your answers short, we'd appreciate it. Right. Um, if you could swap lives with someone today, who would it be and why? And not and not David oh Goggins. Oh my gosh. Uh, I don't know. My 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 business idol has always been uh, Bernard Arnault. Um, the it's, it's he's been my Bernie, idol for the last twenty years. Yeah. yeah, we call him Bernie. <laughs> I, I, it's, I, I don't know how his personal life is, but I, but certainly from a, from a business personal perspective and the things he, the, the brands he's involved with that, that's something to me that I, 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 I always envisioned myself from an early 20 year old kid. That's what I wanted to build into it. So maybe it'll happen in a different way, but it's, it's, he, he lives a life that I, that I, I would love to lead. I, I like how he's separated the business into his four kids and the succession plan is like, Oh, right. Like, yeah. You know, it's like, not like Rupert Murdoch and, you know, the TV shows. Okay. Um, if your life had a theme song, uh, what would it be? Which I have a tiger. And, no, I have a tiger. Have yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. Rambo. <laughs> not Rambo, yeah. Rocky. 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 Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah. Describe yourself in three words. Driven. Empathetic. Fun loving. Sabrina, describe yourself in three words. Passionate, kind, and goofy. What about you? I sexy, good looking, athletic. <laughs> all right. Um, Guy. <laughs> favorite show of all time. Oh my gosh, this is really gonna embarrass me. Um, Emily in Paris. I, I, I have no. I, I actually, I'm not very big on like new shows. I, I, I love. I don't know. I love everything 80s. Um, so everything 80s and 90s. I guess maybe it's the, 24. the Yeah. Well, not even. I mean, I, I would. 
probably the show that I watched the most. I, it, I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's going to sound so horrible. It's probably just Friends. I can turn it on in the background and yeah. it's always just playing. Yeah. We just that, talked that about was, this in the last episode, too. That, that was the 16 year old girl's favorite, favorite TV show, by the way. Prisha. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's just one of those things where I've seen every episode probably 10 times. And I, I don't watch a lot of TV generally, but I like noise in the background. So I, I, I put it on all the time and it's playing. And it's, it's, it's because of the story, the theme of that show never gets old. And it, yeah. obviously, you know, the, 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 in our Bombay days, when we were bored of, of partying and, and, and chasing and being rejected by the ladies, I would actually, um, around that time, I got into West Wing. And once okay. I got into West Wing, I actually preferred, you know, watching Josh and the guys than going out on Saturday night. So I think oh, West really? Wing, <laughs> I think West Wing was, you know, Aaron Sorkin is obviously a genius. You know, you've seen Newsroom and all his new shows. And this was before Game of Thrones and all the high budget sci-fi shows. I like dialogue. I like smart dialogue. And I thought West Wing, I would get up at every show. I would be with, my, with Bharat, Bharat Vasandani. We would get up after every show and just do this. <laughs> like, really? You know, hats off. Yeah, it was just so well done. It leaves you with either a smile or a tear or your heart, you know, pounding. It was just a great show, West Wing. Well, I, I'm proud to say that I've never seen Game of Thrones. I, I, I hardly watch TV. And I, I you know, the, the issue with me is I, my brain needs to turn off. And when I watch TV, I want something really stupid. So, for example, the, the guilty pleasure that I had maybe five or ten years ago is I, I started watching the, the Real Housewives of Beverly. I'm sorry. Uh, Orange County, <laughs> like when it first came out and it was still grainy and the production budget was zero. So I would and just, that's again, why it, you're it, single. It, yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> so I, I, for, for me, like television, I, I, it's very hard for me to get into something that requires a lot of my attention. Um, so I, I, I sort of t tend to gravitate towards sort of lighter material, but I do love good stories for sure. Um, so whether it's in a book or, or a movie, then you know, it, it's it's different. But for me, a television has always kind of just been a way to unwind and, again, just kind of been, so. Okay, so then you brought a book. Favorite book of all time? Wow, uh, there's so many. Um, I, want, I mean, what, I want to say, like, my favorite books to read generally are books that involve entrepreneurship and life journeys. And one of the best ones that I've, a few good ones that I've read are, uh, one is Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, the founder of Nike. It. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, so Loved good. It. It's it, it. yeah. it's it's really every page. It's like, is this guy going to go under and his life going to yeah. go? It's it's so good. Another book that yeah, was really good. Stories to Japan were great as well. Really great. Stories. Yeah, no, it, it, it's yeah. such it's such a. It, I I read that when I was sick and I was just like, it's it's really just yeah. got me through because I was like, wow, this guy went through a lot. Uh, another book that that that. Um, was great was the the late founder of uh, Zappos, uh, Tony Shea. He wrote a book called yeah. Finding Happiness, and it was yeah. it was what what was great about this was again intertwining life and, and business. He he had built his first company, uh, sold it for like two hundred fifty million dollars. Was down to Amazon. That was that was that was his first company that I think I think he sold to. It was Link Exchange, and I think he sold it to Microsoft or he sold it to somebody. I'm oh. not sure. Wasn't he the he diapers guy as well? Wasn't he diapers.com no. and then he did Zappos? I'm, I'm talking had, somebody else. Uh, uh, diapers is Quincy, so it's a different company. But oh. what ended up happening was this was this was a uh, uh, it, uh, an affiliate business, I believe, for advertising. His first business, he okay. sold it for a bunch of money. He basically this, the the idea is he was early twenties, had hundreds of millions of dollars or whatever he had at his disposal, but he did, wasn't happy. And so what do you do? How do you find happiness in that process? And so he started, you know, experimenting with, with things, with substances, Drugs. with, uh, yeah, with, uh, with businesses, all of Mind it. Land. And yeah, exactly. Um, so, so he, he basically gets to a point where his, his all of his investments have gone to zero. His last investment was in a company called Zappos and Zappos at that time was basically somebody that had a website up. And every time there was a shoe order, this guy would run to Foot Locker to fill the order. So it was it was not a business. But so so he 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 made up his mind. He he saw the potential in this, and so he had he had he had basically spent all his money on other investments that had gone south. And his he had to remortgage his apartment, which is all he had left, 
to reinvest into Zappos into its growth. So he, again, he was at rock bottom and he built it up to, you know, the billion dollar sale to, to Amazon. And it, it talks about his whole journey about discovering himself and what makes him happy. And then also how that intertwines with his professional life. And I mean, that it was very inspiring, but these are the type of books that I really love reading. Very cool. Yeah. So speaking of brands, Amita, you want to ask him your last uh, question? Yeah, last question. Uh, if you uh, decided to tattoo two brands on your shoulders or back or whatever, uh, what would those two brands be if you were given uh, those products or services of those brands free for the rest of your life? Oh, uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, probably, probably Apple. I mean, I have, uh, Apple products have become so ubiquitous in everything that we do every day. Um, and it's, it's, uh, the others, I don't know, something, something that makes me look good. Maybe, uh, maybe Tom Ford. I thought right. you were going to say something from yeah. Bernard Nor's portfolio. Or, or that, well, the other answer would, would have been one of those, one of those brands, yeah. but got it. <laughs> um, Romain, um, I think you're kick-ass. I, I think you're uh, you're oh, really you, you know really uh, inspirational, and uh, you know this podcast is about guys like you, you know who who've had uh, literally uh, shit given to them, and uh, they're turning shit into gold, mm -hmm. or at least trying to, and doing it with a smile and with a great attitude, and uh, you. you know that's something that we Sabrina and I respect and admire. And uh, I've really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, thank you for sharing your story. I'm sure you're going to continue to be successful. And uh, I'm moving back to Bombay uh, after 12 oh, amazing. years in Chile. Yeah. So next time you're in India, uh, you know. December. Uh, December. Yeah. I'm New, there. New Year's Eve. Let's do it. I'll be there. Maybe we'll be chasing women a bit different this time. But uh, we'll. we'll, we'll <laughs> no, you know, P. Diddy, no P. Diddy no, style. Uh, no, I'll be the wingman. I'll be I, the wingman. I can double up on that. No, I'll be the one that. So look forward to it. Thanks a lot, yeah. Me, Sabrina. Yeah. yeah, this was great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you, guys. you Thank you so much. Thank you for being so honest and inspiring. And we wish you nothing but the best in health and success and happiness. So truly. And a wife. And an Indian wife soon. Yeah, we'll yes. talk about that off air right now. <laughs> do, 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 you, do you mind if I uh, give the readers uh, my, my Instagram page in case they want to? No. Uh, on the thank contrary. You. We're going to put it on the show notes, but go ahead. You want to say oh, it? sure. It, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's 247 manifesto. So just the numbers 247 and the word manifesto. Um, that's, you know, really hopefully my way to help and inspire people through my journey. Great. Love it. 247 manifesto. And we'll make sure it's in the show notes. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Everyone. This was fun guys. This is awesome. This was great. Everyone, we hope you enjoyed this show just as much as we did today. Um, follow 247 Manifesto and always good wishes to you, Romaine. Everyone, if, please subscribe and share it with others. Thank you. Fuck Have a great cancer. day.